Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now, I'm sure you know that Android is an open source project. That means all the source code is available on the internet and you can download it and build your own base version of Android. Now, this means that there are plenty of private individuals, hobbyist groups, and even commercial enterprises that use the open source code for Android to build their own Android variation. If you think about CyanogenMod or Cyanogen Inc., they are probably the two most famous examples. Now, have you ever wondered how to download and build Android, make some modifications, and therefore produce your own customized version of Android? Well, let me explain. Now, before we get any grand visions of producing the next version of Cyanogen Mod and we're going to just modify Android so much, let's just have a reality check here. Android is a complicated and full operating system and there is lots and lots of components to it. There's all the Linux kernel and there are all the frameworks and subsystems and different stacks that are needed to do all the stuff that Android can do. Then there's the user interface on top of that. And then there's the core applications on top of that. I mean, it's big. I mean, the build space on my build machine is 120 gigs. So that just shows you how much data there is involved in building a version of Android. It's not all source code by any means, but it's a huge amount of data. So what we're gonna to do today is do some very, very simple things. Just pigeon steps, baby steps really, just to see the principles involved in building and modifying Android so that you get your own custom distribution. Now what we're gonna do is two things. First of all, we're going to download and build the Android source code using the Android open source project. And then once we have that successfully flashed onto a test device, we are going to modify some things about it and then flash that modifications onto the test device to see a variation of Android that we've done using our own little fingers. Now, before we get started, we must say there are some prerequisites to this. Now, one of the prerequisites is you need to have some command line knowledge, whether that's on Linux or whether that's on Mac OS X, you really do need to have some command line knowledge. And that includes also not only things like CD and LS and change directory and all that kind of stuff, but also things like make and Java compilers and just editing source code from the command line. If you don't have that kind of knowledge, then really you're gonna find this a bit of a struggle. But if you have that knowledge, if you know what a make file is, if you know what a compiler is, then this is gonna be fairly straightforward. Now, Google have got some great documentation on the Android Open Source Project website about how you download and build the Android Open Source Project. Now, I'm not going to repeat in verbatim all the things they've said there, so a couple of bits of advice. First of all, go and read that documentation. The link is here in the description. It's also over on the androidauthority.com website with the article that goes along with this video. Read it, then read it again, and then when you think you've read it again, read it a third time, because if you skip over bits, if you don't register things that it said, if you didn't understand something it said, it's gonna make the whole build process difficult. But if you've absorbed all of those build instructions, if you understand the principles that are going on, it's gonna be a whole lot easier for you. Now, the basic steps to building the Android open source project are like this. First of all, you need to have a compatible build environment. And that means basically a Linux machine or a Mac uh, OS X machine. Now, you're gonna need quite a bit of memory and hard disk space. My Mac has got eight gigs of memory and 120 gigabytes of disk space was put aside for this build. So you're gonna need those kind of um, requirements to be able to download and start the build process. Now, once you've established the build environment, the next step is to sync your local repository with the repository that's out on the internet. And that's pretty huge. For me, it took 24 hours. So it's the kind of thing you're gonna run overnight and maybe a bit longer, and you're gonna see the results slowly, but it is working. Don't worry, it is working. It just takes a long, long time. Now, once you've got the source code, once you've got the build environment established, you need to get hold of the binaries. Now, not all the drivers for the different parts of these Nexus devices are distributed as source code. Now, I've chosen to use a Nexus 5X. Really, the Nexus is the easiest devices for building the AOSP project, and the binaries are available inside the project repository. Now, you need to download them and unpack them inside of your build environment. 
Now, once you have the binaries, the source, and the build environment set up, the next thing to do is to choose the build type, and you do that using the lunch tool, and then you've got a whole bunch of options there. You just pick the one for your particular device. Then once that's all set up, you can actually go ahead and start the build process using Make. Now again, this process can take quite a while, several hours, again, depending on the performance of your machine. So be prepared to let this thing just churn away in the background until it has finished building the whole project. And then once you have a built firmware, once you get a success from that make command, you then need to make sure that your bootloader is unlocked on your Nexus device, and then you can flash over the new ROM onto the device. Now, as I said, the instructions are pretty good that Google provide. However, there probably are some pitfalls and some bumps that you're gonna meet along the way. And I've done this whole process recently, and I've got over in the written article all the different tricks and tips I learned on how to make the build successful. I'll give you an example. There's one stage during the make process where I was constantly running out of memory, even though I've got eight gigabytes. Now there are ways around that, and I've got that listed over in the article. So please go and read that article because I'll, all my experience in this recent process has been dumped out there, and I think you'll find that useful if you hit a barrier during this build process. Now, if you manage to download and build the firmware and flash it onto your device, first of all, congratulations, well done. That's a big step in this process. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is modify Android so that we can say we have our own custom, very, very slightly custom, of course, but our own custom version of Android. And we're gonna do two things. First of all, we're going to modify the messaging app that's the app that's used for SMS messaging, just to be slightly different, something that we've added to it ourselves. And secondly, we're going to modify the settings app so that we can have the build name and the build number of this ROM uh, inside of the settings. Okay, so let's go ahead and modify the messaging app. What you need to do is you need to change directory into packages, apps, and then inside there you need to find the messaging app, which is in packages, apps, messaging. Then drill down through source, com, Android messaging and edit the file called bugleapplication.java. Now bugleapplication.java is basically the entry point into the messaging app. Now scroll down and after the long list of import statements, you want to import the toast widget and you do that using this line of code. Now once you've added that in, now go down to the onCreate function that's the function that's called when the app is first started, and add in these two following lines of code towards the bottom of the function. You then need to save that file, CD back up to the beginning of your working directory, the root of your working directory, and then start another make. And that will recompile the necessary files and produce a new system image, which you can then flash on over to your device. Now, once it's flashed over at the device reboot, go into the messaging app and you will notice that the first time you open the messaging app, a nice little toast appears at the bottom saying, welcome. It's a minor change, but it just shows you that we can modify the Java code of these core apps and get them to do the things that we want them to do. Now, no self-respecting ROM would be without its settings page that tells you the name of the ROM, maybe the name of the author, when it was built, the version number, and so on. And we're just gonna add two fields to the setting page in the About Phone section to just talk about the name of our ROM and the version number. So to do that, you need to go into Packages, Apps, Settings, res xml and find the device info settings.xml file and then right down at the bottom just before the preference screen close tag you need to add in these lines of code now as you can see they basically give us a preference which talks about the rom name whizbang pop rom and the rom build number 7.0.1 Again, you need to follow the same process, save that file, go back up to the root of your working directory, rebuild the Android open source project, flash it over onto your device, and then when it reboots, go to settings, go to about phone, and you'll see those two new fields that you have added in there. Well done.
Now, I'd just like to add as a caveat, that's really a hack what I've just done there with the uh, settings page. Really, all strings need to be defined in strings.xml under each of the individual languages that are supported by your ROM. These are hard-coded strings. It's the wrong way to do it, but it's the quickest way to show you for this video. If you're gonna do any serious open source uh, Android project development, then you need to make sure you do it right. Use strings.xml. Now let me just emphasize that what we've done here are some very simple changes. However, the principles are exactly the same. You modify the Java code or you modify the XML for the layout and for the user interface and you make it, you compile it, and then you flash it onto your test device. Now again, we've made some very small modifications. However, with more work and more effort, you can make a more and more customized version of Android. Well, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. Don't forget to download the Android Authority app because that is a great place to get all the latest news and features directly on your mobile phone. And also don't forget to visit androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android. Now, I'm glad you've waited here to the end of the video because I want to tell you I've now got a new green screen. What do you think about my new green screen? Please tell me in the comments if you think I should use it more in the future, use it less. I'd love to hear what you think. It's a new thing for me and I'm just playing around with it. Your opinion, please. <laughs>